You know what's the advantage to weapons which aren't super powerful or super popular? Riff in this position. And that's how you can take an underdog and make it into a full-blown champion. Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into the Paris Prime. I think this was one of my first Prime weapons ever built. So as per the usual, I'm gonna have a cheap build, something affordable that most players will be able to build, but of course, we also have the quote-unquote endgame set up with a crazy Riven. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player-friendly approach. I like to take my time and explain whatever I feel is necessary for newer players, because there's a lot of info here and I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how and why it should be built the way that it is. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, please, bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Paris Prime. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped, and for that, just a couple of free shots. The Paris Prime is a traditional style bow, no fancy explosions or projectiles here my friends, this one, you pull it back, you release the arrow and you get damage on your target as soon as you hit it. You have a projectile based attack, and with projectile based attacks, you gotta take into account two aspects, well at the very least two of them. First of all, the speed of the projectile. The travel speed on the Paris Prime is actually quite nice, but you do have an ever so slight drop off of the arrow. Take a look, you see that? It's ever so slight, so this will be about 18 meters if I remember correctly, till the target, let me check, let me check, yeah, 65 meters till the target, something of the sort, and you gotta aim slightly, ever so slightly above the head. But this is for a stationary target, when it comes to actual gameplay, remember to lead your targets, just a little bit, just a little bit. Other than that, there's one more way to fire the Paris Prime, just like with any other traditional style bow, you can rapid fire it like so. It's a quick shot. This is what DE calls a quick shot. Basically, you don't pull the arrow all the way back to get all of the damage. You get a fraction of the damage. So if you want to finish off a target really quick, that definitely can come in quite useful. Uh, by the way, what do you think of my fashion? This is my wannabe Mercy-ish Trinity, which still looks cool. Never mind. Let's jump into actions and plug in that auto-king catalyst, my friends, because if your mod capacity is only 30 out of 30, press this button right here and plug in that catalyst, doubling your mod capacity. You can pay 20 plat to have one installed, you can grind one from Nightwave, uh, you can get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie and some events in Warframe also feature an auto-king catalyst as a possible or guaranteed reward. Now, my Paris Prime has been formed a total of 5 times, but for the weapon build I'm recommending you guys, uh, free forma should do it. The Paris Prime is definitely not a forma heavy weapon. Now, accuracy 16.7, this is basic. This is basic for any traditional style bow and warframe, it's a pinpoint accurate weapon as long as you can aim it properly. The charge rate is 0.5, which is ex absolutely solid. In my humble of opinions, you wouldn't need fire rate mods on this one, but if you want to try something with like precise macros and all whatnot, even though the is not really all that cool with macros, you can definitely try to put on some fire rate. Critical chance 45%, which is absolutely solid, with a nice critical multiplier of 2.0x, of course, a magazine of 1, multi-shot of 1, noise silent, and the punch rule of 3 meters. Absolutely insane, but this punch rule only applies to the charge shot, so pull it all the way back. Normally bows come with punch rule, but not this much, not 3 meters. Reload 07. Mm. What does this mean anyway? This is the time it takes your warframe to pull an arrow from the quiver. You get it? Really quick. Riven Disposition, 5 out of 5, my friends, beautiful, beautiful, aren't you tired of seeing weapons with like 1 out of 5? Finally, this weapon is not so popular, because there's plenty of traditional style bows that are considered better than the Paris Prime, but you will see the performance on this one is absolutely crazy, and the Riven Disposition is maxed out, which is absolutely, or almost maxed out, which is absolutely insane. The amount of stats on Rivens are gonna be hilarious. Status chance 20%, this could have been a tad higher considering that you don't fire a whole lot of arrows, 35% uh, something of the sort of course trigger charge, the damage, yes, the damage. You see the difference between quick shot damage and actual charge damage, you lose half of the damage if you go for a quick shot, but when we mod it you'll see of course the damage will change. This is a puncture based attack because it is an arrow, honestly it would have been ideal if impact wasn't here, even though there is a very small amount of impact on a weapon, Essentially, the problem is it's it's introduced in the proc priority formula, right? It can proc. That's the problem with having it on the weapon. It can proc. Uh, ever so small chance, but it still can proc. When it comes to the weapon ex excellence mod slot, 
definitely unlock this one because with the Heart of Deimos, we got the following mod. I don't know how to pronounce it. I will attempt it. Bizajbal, Bizajbal, Bizaj. I don't know this one. All right, this one restores 300 health for uh, every free status effects, which is fantastic. Game, yeah, but 90% status chance. Beautiful, and it's an excellent mod. Thank you, D. You finally got it. You put it in the excellent mod. But what was wrong with putting the Soma Prime mod in the excellent slot too? Huh? What was wrong anyway? So this one is definitely best in slot, but there are other options. Worth considering. Vigilante's plan. <laughs> nah. Terminal velocity. If you're having trouble landing your arrows precisely on a headshot, you might want to try this one. It's actually not all that bad. 60% projectile flight speed will make it easier for you to land your shots. And speaking about shots, that segue has nothing to do. Anyway, let's check out the standard build, shall we? And you got damage acceleration, multi shot with split chamber, critical chance, and critical damage combo between vital sense point strike. And of course, hunter munitions has to be here as well, especially considering that we are going over 100% crit chance through the use of point strike. Rhyme rounds and malignant force. Since you have hunter mumu, you gotta have the 60 60 vital mods. Malignant force can be farmed from uh, corrupted vor in the void, if not from the trade chat. Mm. 5 to 10 plats, something of the sort, on PC. And Rhyme Rounds, well, from Spy Missions, and again, 5 to 10 plats from the PC trade chat. One more mod open, and of course you got the bish ball here, over, yeah. Anyway, the final slot is definitely up to you. Let me show you a couple of options. Heavy cal- no! You're not gonna go with heavy caliber, guys. This one will destroy your accuracy. And on a bow, on a projectile-based attack, on a critical projectile-based attack, you definitely don't want to go with heavy calibre. This is great on other weapons, especially on beam weapons, but not here. Mm, more multi-shot. Always a good idea to go with something like Vigilante Armaments, definitely. So you can go for something like so, we're gonna try it out like this, and then we're gonna switch it up. Vigilante Armaments also increases the chance to get slashes, of course, because more projectiles. Yes, you get it how it works. 150% multi-shot right now means that my second arrow is guaranteed my second projectile on the target. And I also have a 50% chance per shot to get a third arrow on my target. That's how multi-shot works and all what not. Now we're gonna go straight for a headshot. This is a standard rudimentary setup with no expensive mods whatsoever. You got a slash on your target, almost 6,000 slash. You saw the numbers there? There were three arrows on my target, but even so, without the viral proc, the slash wasn't really all that powerful. So essentially, you need the two to work together. You need viral and slash at the exact same time, like this. You got the viral proc, you got the slash proc, and look at the value. Even though that was just a simple yellow slash, it wasn't an orange slash, you got almost 12,000 slash on the target. You can also get 12,000 slash on the target, but it's gotta be a orange slash. So that, that's a single slash, oh, two slashes, 11,752, because there is no viral proc on the target. Essentially, the weapon can one-shot, as you can see. It gets really, really close most of the time. For example, this is a one-shot because you got two slashes, two viral procs, 24,000 bleed. It, it essentially annihilated that target without any issue whatsoever. But you see the problem? I got a viral proc this time, but I got no slash. If that happens, the weapon is 100% underwhelming. The weapon relies on procs from Hunter Munitions and from Vital. Now, Vital applications are plenty, especially considering the new excellent slot, so you don't really have any problem with that one. It's a welcome mod from my humble point of view. 11,753 with a Vital proc. Actually, that was a kill because the initial damage on the target, if I saw that right, was one orange hit, but it wasn't the slash. The slash was the yellow part. You can rewind and watch and see if I was right or not on that one. So as you can see, the weapon is plenty powerful. Do not underestimate multi-shot. When you see me put on Vigilante Armaments on a whole lot of builds, multi-shot is extremely important in builds such as this. But there are other options. Let's say you like a bigger crits, mama, bigger crits. Well, bigger colored crits. Yes, I like pretty colors on my screen. What? I like pretty colors on my screen. Hold on, my phone is ringing. Yes, we will deliver. Uh, good. Now, speaking about Argon Scope. Yes, this one used to be so expensive. So exp. I paid for mine about a year and a half ago. 300 plat? It was, it was a time where it was like stupid high prices and I wanted to get one for the reviews. Nowadays, you simply get it from Deimos Bounties, from the Trade Chat 5 to 10 plat. 
killed off the Acolyte event with this one. Uh, with, with Argon Scope up, you're going to about 200% crit chance, something of the sort. Now, one more time, Corrupted Heavy Goons, level 120. You saw how many times we got one-shots or how close we got to one-shots. Let's do that again. Nada! Two arrows instead of three this time. There you go, you got Faro Slash on the target. Considering the base damage we already did to it, it should be dead. Yes, it is dead. One Slash and one critical hit, 11,000. That should bring it to about 10% or 5. Told you. Right on the bloody edge. This is how the weapon is. Honestly, I know you want to use... I know you want to use Argon Scope because you can finally get it. It's easy, you know, and everybody has it and all whatnot. It's more crit, it's more pretty colors. But actually, I would advocate for more multi shot for that little Vigilante Armaments mod to be a better idea. That's just my two cents on the matter. But there's still one more mod which makes even more sense than these two. And that mod is a no-brainer. Think about it for a second. You got guaranteed crits with point strike alone. You don't really need Argon Scope to take you to the next tier. So in this case, I would honestly also consider and recommend you guys go for, uh, what's it called, um, Bladed Round. Yes, more uh, more critical damage. Now this one is an on-kill effect. Ah, you see, it does have that little bit against it, but it's 120% critical damage, which is the same amount as Vital Sense. So if you can get over the fact that it's on-kill and honestly in the mission, you're going to be getting plenty of kills. This is the mod to go for. Now let's... Excuse you, nine and oh my god, I'm missing. Okay. <laughs> Slash, damn you. There you go. <laughs> Job done. Where was I? Oh yeah, bladed rounds makes the most sense from my humble point of view. You get another 120% critical damage when aiming for 9 seconds. It's an on-kill effect though. So, level 120 corrupted heavy goons, one more time. We are gonna have to get a kill to get the buff from bladed rounds, however. So, one in your head, two in your head. Come on, Slash, damn you. Damn you, Slash. <laughs> I said no Slash. Alright, we got bladed rounds. Hey, One hit. That's it, 18,000 slash. That is the power of more critical damage, my friends. Look at that, 53,000 slash there was orange. Look at that slash. Beautiful, beautiful, no viral, 17,500 no viral, one shot on the target. So yes, you should be able to keep a bladed rounds up without any sorts of issue. But as before, no proc, no luck, no GG. That's basically how it works with builds such as this on bows. Sometimes there's absolutely amazing, they absolutely shred targets like there's no tomorrow. Like now. And other times when you don't get the proc, well, you're kind of left hanging. Which is why bows aren't, well, traditional style bows are not super uber popular. Now, there's still one more thing that I want to do. Actually, two more things which I do want to do. Let's talk about Riven mods because one of the advantages to playing something like the Paris Prime is that you get to enjoy that huge Riven disposition of 5 out of 5. And this one is definitely not mine. Why would it be? It's an actual good roll. Damage, critical chance, and plus weapon recall. Take a look at the values on this. That's just stupid. 300% damage. 255% crit chance. Double positive with a negative. Absolutely insane, man. It's just, just insane. 237.6% critical chance with only point strike and riven. No argon scope. No argon. There's no room. Instead of what? You know? Instead of what? And the damage is just absolutely insane, man. 8.5k on the charge shot and of course half of that 4.27, 3.1 on the normal shot. And just, uh, did I show that I'm not cheating? I'm not cheating. Look, there's nothing here. All right? I'm not cheating with anything. Now, with a Riven, of course, things get a whole lot better than before, as they should, my friends. And you know what? Yeah, definitely go for a Paris Riven. They're not expensive. It's 5 out of 5. Have a little bit of fun. Live a little. That's a slash 23,000. Goodbye, my mom. Goodbye, mom. I gotta move out. I gotta move out. But as before, no matter how powerful the weapon may be, up until this point, I haven't been using the punch on the weapon. Now I am. No matter how powerful the weapon may be, if you don't get the procs, then it's not GG. It's simple as that. Using the punch through now, as you can see, it's just absolutely insane. It's a hard weapon not to recommend when it does things like this. And again, you're not talking about super expensive ribbons or anything of the sort. Nobody charges a whole lot of, plat uh, whole lot of plat for 
unrolled Paris ribbons. I don't know, 20, 30, maybe 50 plat, something of the sort. But to get an actual good roll from the start, yeah, that will cost you a bit. My recommendation, as per the usual, if you love the weapon and what's not to love, to be honest, simply get an unrolled one, head on over to Kuva and see if you get lucky. If you got my luck, though, <laughs> good luck with that one. And of course, there's still more that we can do with Lady Mirage Prime. This is the Warframe buff section, my friends. My favorite. See the problem with Trinity. There's one problem with uh, Lobster Girl. This. Why did they think this was a good... This is not a good... I'd remove this and everything else is fine. Trust me, I'm an expert in when it comes to stuff like this. So Mirage Prime, yes. Mirage Prime, appropriate, appropriate, definitely. We're gonna have to color the bow, though. I'm sorry, my OCD is just conking me in the head if it's not colored appropriate. There we go, perfect, right, right, awesome. So when it comes to Warframe buffs, you guys should know the drill by now. Corrosive projection against heavily armored targets, but again, this is not a must-have necessarily, unless you're doing super high-level content. Go with whatever aura your build needs. I don't know, maybe you want physique, rejuvenation, pistol amp. Don't, don't use pistol lamp. Uh, shield disruption, energy siphon, or whatever else. A lot of new players in Warframe enjoy energy siphon, but keep in mind that the actual energy this one gives you is not a whole lot. Or perhaps power donation, or growing power, etc. Mm. Arcane Rage will definitely work for bows. On headshot, 50% chance for a massive 180% damage to primary weapons for 24 seconds. Even as I say that 180% is massive, because it is. Keep in mind how much that Riven gives you. That's the power of 5 out of 5. This was just insane. And you can also go with Arcane Avenger because... Even more crit, because why the hell not? 45% critical chance. This one bonus additive after simply stacking on top of what you already have. Um, it applies to your primary, secondary, and to your melee as well. Now... Of course, this being a primary weapon, make sure to get your little sentinel as well. I usually use carrier because I don't want to worry about ammo and pads and stuff like that. And on your little sentinel's weapon, make sure you have all the vigilante mods, offense, supplies, fervor, and armaments for that 20% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons. Crit, crit on top of crit, on top of crit. Now, I have seen some opinions, stuff like laser, why don't you use hero with a critical weapon? <sighs> why would I? It already has crit. You use Harrow when the weapon has everything else but crit. And you give it crit. And that's how you make an OP combination. If the weapon already has crit, then you take more damage with Lady Mirage. Not that anybody can get up to her level when it comes to actual uh, buffs for weapons. Now, let's bump up the level to 150. We're gonna be unpausing the AI so they can hit me and I can get my buffs. And as per the usual, my friends, we're gonna activate Empower for Mirage, because I do have Empower. Our free ability for a massive, absolutely massive damage increase, then Empower again, then the clones. I still don't know if the clones actually do something uh, with Empower or not. <laughs> How many targets did I kill there? Two? Three with a single shot? I don't know, man. Absolutely insane. What procs? There's no procs here. There's no need for procs. That is the amount of power I get with Lady Mir. And they're impaled to walls. It's like it's like the Grim Reaper passed through this place, man. It's absolutely insane. How could I not recommend something like this? Now, I will be honest with you. My opinion is definitely subjective because I'm a bow guy. I love... Oh. I love bows. I love traditional style bows, not necessarily the Brahma or the lens or anything of the sort. I love this effect because it's simply so satisfying to me to land that precise headshot and see the target flying off into the distance in a couple of seconds left and I can't see him anymore. That is just satisfying to me. It may not be satisfying to you though, so bear that one in mind. I guess it's... Okay, and the clones. One more time because it is fun. Take a look at that. Absolutely insane. I just love bows. Traditional style bows in Warframe. Paris Prime is an outstanding weapon. I still highly recommend it, especially considering that it may not be the greatest when it comes to base stats per se, when it comes to traditional style bows. I mean, we can talk about the Dread. By the way, link in the cards right now if you want to see the Dread in action as well. But it does definitely make up for in Riven disposition. And if you're a Riven guy, if you're a Riven collector, I think it's worth having one in your collection for kicks and lols and all whatnot. As always, my name is Malaysar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And if you got any sorts of feedback for me, by all means, drop it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, if you guys got any particular type of feedback or want to suggest any particular type of video, like, hey, I want to see that and I don't want to see that and all that good stuff. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter. Oh, look at him go. Look at him go. You see that? Look at him go. He's still going.
uh, Twitch, Facebook, uh, Twitter, all the usual places. But <laughs> until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.